good morning students the topic of today's discussion is manufacture of biochemicals now in our earlier classes we have already learned about the cell and we have also learned that cells are of two types one is the prokaryotic and another is the eukaryotic so we have also learned that how eukaryotic cells are different from that of the prokaryotic cells we have also learned that prokaryotic cells are the primitive cells and eukaryotic cells are the advanced or the modern cells where all these organelles are performing different activities and when we have studied the cells and its organelles we have also learned that how each and every organelles are participating in different activities of the cell now uh, then in in some other classes we have also learned that how the metabolic reactions are going on within the cell and we have also seen that how this manipulation of cells that means that incorporation of one particular gene can be inserted to another particular organism and with proper expression how we can go for the over production of any metabolites which can be produced in the cell now today in our this particular class will be learning that how this biochemicals can be manufactured and what are the different techniques and how one can produce this biochemicals for different activities different applications now here coming to this biochemicals if we are if we see this biochemicals then we can find that the cell itself can be used as a biomass and this biomass can be used for different purposes and the microorganism with its own metabolites which is produced within the cell or which are produced within the cell can be referred as the product of our own interest from the natural or genetically improved strains now here in my earlier classes i have already mentioned you that in the prokaryotic cell particularly in bacteria there is a plasmid dna now if we remember that what is that plasmid plasmid is a circular double helix structure dna and it can be with the restriction enzymes we can make it a linear dna we can insert our targeted gene to this and once again with the another enzyme called ligase we can once again express this particular uh, this this plasmid dna to any expression system it may be a bacteria it may be any higher organism eukaryotic cell yeast or fungi or anything so if we see and why we are doing this type of genetically engineered organism we are doing this type of genetically engineered organism because of the over production or improved productivity now this products products what i am talking about today may be amino acids it may be antibacterial agent it may be antifungal agent it may be carbohydrates it may be dyes and cosmetics ingredient it may be enzymes foods and so on it can be that lipid it can be the nucleotide and its precursors it can be organic synthesis and its intermediates pharmaceutical significant compound it may be plant growth factors steroid toxins vitamins coenzymes and so on so any metabolites which can be produced in any living cells 
can be considered as the biochemicals. Now, how we are going for such type of things? We can use some lower group of microorganisms what we have learned the architecture and different organelles and we have already learned that how they behave and from that previous knowledge we can now implement those knowledge basic knowledge for application oriented work. Now here when we are just talking about this particular insertion of one particular gene of our interest to any primitive organism and if we are over producing this all these activities are coming under the recombinant DNA technology that is otherwise known as rDNA technology or we can tell that these are the genetically engineered strains. Now this overproduction can be done either by genetically engineered strains or sometimes we can take the natural or the wild strains too where such type of metabolic productions or productivities are there. So, these type of strains can be used for human therapeutics, it can be used for enzymes, it can be used for amino acids and so on. So, any metabolites which are biological in nature and produced by the cells can be used for biochemical production. At a glance, if we see the different types of biochemical products, then we can classify this the different biochemicals into different sectors like that chemical sector, pharmaceuticals, energy, food, agriculture and so on. Now, if we further classify the chemicals under each sector, then we can find that some of these chemicals like ethanol, acetone, butanol, etc. that are used as a bulk chemicals organic acids like acetic acid, butyric acid, propionic acid, citric acids and so on, enzymes, polymers and these are the products which are coming under the chemical sectors which can be produced from the biological origin too. Pharmaceuticals such as antibiotics, enzyme, enzyme inhibitor, monoclonal antibodies, steroids, vaccine and so on are coming under the pharmaceuticals or the health care sector. When we are talking about the energy sectors, then we are mainly talking about the ethanol that is, that is used as a gasohol at methane that is the biogas which has got immense applications, immense importance as far as today's world is concerned. Food is also another important sector where we can consider any dairy products like cheese, yogurts, any baker's yeast, beverages like beer, wine food additives, amino acid, vitamins, single cell proteins, etc., which are coming under the food sector. When we are talking about the agriculture, then animal feed, waste treatment process, vaccine, microbial pesticide, herbicides, etc., mycorrhizal inoculants, etc., these are the products which are very much coming under the agricultural sector. So, here I am just telling few names as a symbol that any biologicals or biochemicals which are produced in any particular cells, any particular living cell can be considered as the biochemicals and we can go for the manufacture or the production or synthesis of that particular product 
in the living cell. Now, when we are talking about the cell, then obviously I have told you the cells are of different types and depending upon the development, we have categorized these cells into different sectors. One is the microbial cell, another is the plant cell, another is the animal cell. Now, while talking to this architecture and the cell organelles, I have also, also mentioned you that animal cells are different from the plant cells are the different from microbial cells. So, each and every cell irrespective of its origin has certain similarities and certain differences and those things we have already learned. Now, coming to the animal cell cultivation. Now, when we are talking about the animal cell culture, then we are just taking those cells from the parent cell or the donor cell. Now, when we are taking this, we are considering the animal cell cultivation, the cells which are removed from the animal tissues can be cultivated in nutritional medium outside of the donor's body. That means, we are taking those cells and we are, we are making some environment in such a way which will mimic the body conditions. That means, whatever is the body conditions that whatever is the physiological pH, temperature, everything, we are simulating that in any other environment and we are making that environment suitable for this animal cell cultivation. Now, this tissue culture methodology has given researchers the opportunity to study the cancer cell, to classify malignant tumors, to determine tissues compatibility in transplantation and to study the specific cells and their interaction. So, when we are just going for this, so different types of techniques are there. One of the technique is that one cell line, you just normal cell line, you take another cancerous cell line, you just take and you fuse both the cells together and the resultant product what we are getting is called the hybrid cell that one is the malignant that cancerous that malignant cell another is a uh, one is a tumorous another is a normal and they are getting fused and we are getting the hybridoma cell. Now, this is one type of cell cultivation there are very many types of cell cultivation. Now, why we are taking this cancerous cell for such type of activities? One of the reason is that we already learned that this cancer cell has got one characteristic that they do not have any control on its cell growth. N number of multiplication and cell divisions are going on resulting in the formation of tumor and this particular characteristic we would like to mimic, we would like to exploit for our metabolite production and this way when we are going for this cell cultivation, we can produce different types of biologicals which can be synthesized through this technique. One of the very important uh, product is your human growth hormone, interferon, plasminogen activators, viral vaccine monoclonal antibodies and so on. These are some of the symbolic products I am just showing you just which has got immense applications as far as human health is concerned. Now, when some mammalian gene products can also produced by this bacterial system using the recombinant DNA technology. Now, what we are doing? Now, mammalian cell culture, where what we have seen? We have seen that some of the cells we are taking from the donor cell and then 
we are simulating some environment where it will mimic the body condition and cells will be proliferating and this is the animal cell cultivation. In other way, I told you very many techniques are there that is one technique. Another technique is that we can take the gene of our interest which is giving our targeted product and we are just splicing that gene from that mammal's body and we are inserting that gene to any bacteria. Now here, so as I have told, this mammalian gene can also get expressed in some microorganism by taking some microbes, we can express that particular gene which is coming under the recombinant DNA technology. First, why, why we are going for such type of things that mammalian gene we are just taking and we are just getting it expressed in the very lower group of organism because microorganisms can grow very fast. So, because of its fast growth rate and inexpensive medium required for the bacterial cells make them an economical alternative to the mammalian cell culture. Now just you imagine if we are mimicking any body system, just see how costly that particular affairs, that condition will be. So here if we can take that gene out of this mammal and if we can insert that to any bacteria and if we can express, we can cultivate that particular bacteria for that particular product formation, then what will happen? Then the, the production cost, medium requirement and everything will be the bacterial type. It is gene of mammal, but that media or the uh, particular organism where we are expressing that particular gene is the microorganism. So, we can use that microbial media for the micro, microorganisms growth. So, it is very easy, it is very cheaper than that mimicking the biological that tissue or the body condition. So, we can produce a cost effective product in this particular condition. However, bacteria lack the capability of post -trans translational modification which involve proteolytic cleavage, subunit association or a variety of additional reactions such as glycosylation, methylation, phosphorylation, acylation and so on. These modifications are important for proper biological activities of the product. Now, as in my earlier classes, I have told you that how simple a bacterial cell is and how complex the eukaryotic cells compared to this prokaryotic cell. Now, when we are taking some gene from a complex system to a simplified system, simple media, simple system and we are just expressing that particular thing, it is happening that and we have also seen that transcription, translation and all those the central dogma which is going on for protein synthesis and entire body regulation, we have already learned those things and now we can understand that what is going on within the cell. Now, when such type of activities are going on after trans translation that process when protein is being synthesized in higher organism, higher cells that post translational modifications are needed, are done which is very much lacking in the prokaryotic system because in higher system more organelles and more complexities are there, more uh, modifications or updated reactions are going on which is not there in the bacterial system and that is the reason why sometimes after successful expression some problems we have to face. 
which is very much needed for proper biological activities of that particular product. Therefore, an inactive polypeptide have been have to be isolated and refolded into proper structures of active proteins in vitro which can be difficult and expensive procedures. So, these are some of these problems and what are the actual problem associated with the mammalian cell cultivation process is that if we see that cell cultivation if we compare the mammalian cell with any microbial cell we can find that everything is different starting from its architecture to its behavioral properties everything is different. Now, here what we can see that mammalian cells are larger and more complex than most of the microorganisms. Their growth rate is very slow compared to the microorganism. Therefore, the productivity is low and the maintenance of sterility is very, very difficult. This is one of the very important point as far as animal cell culture is concerned. Now, as they are growing in a very slow rate, we have to keep that particular or we have to maintain that particular environment sterile for a prolonged time. So, maintenance of sterility in that particular environment is a very difficult as far as the cell cultivation is concerned. They are enclosed with a delicate plasma membrane without a tough cell wall normally found in microorganisms and plant cells. As a result, they are very much fragile in nature. So, I have told you that animal cells do not have any cell wall. So, as it does not have any cell wall, so cell membrane is there. Whereas, in microbial cell, we have learned the cell wall, cell membrane. In case of in a plant cells also, cell wall is there. So, they are giving the extra protection and that protection is missing in case of animal cell. Obviously, the handling of animal cell is very tough because, because of its fragile nature and that is the reason why we are so much bothered about this animal cell cultivation process. The nutritional requirements are not fully defined yet requiring expensive blood serum for the medium because we are mimicking the body condition and that is the reason why this particular cell cultivation is so expensive. They are part of an organized tissue rather than an individual cellular organism. Most of the animal cells only grow when attached to the surface. So, these are all about this animal cell cultivation. So, when we have compared the animal cells along with the plant and microbial cells, we have seen that there is a significant difference between the microbial cell and animal cell, mammalian cell and so on. When we are considering the plant cell cultivation, now here when we are talking about this plant cell, plant cell has got cell wall which has got a similarity with the microbial cell. Microbial cells also has got this micro, microbes has got cell wall. So, here plant cells can be cultivated where they are needed regardless of the weather and the ge geographical conditions. The products, the product quality and yields can also be well controlled by eliminating the problems encountered in the processing of botanicals such as the quality of the raw material, uniformity within and among lots and damage the shipment and storage. Some metabolic, metabolic products 
can also be produced from the suspension culture in higher quantities than that is observed in the wholesale and that is the reason why we are going for this plant cell cultivation. Now, here also this same problem when we are comparing the growth rate of the plant cell and any microbial cell, we generally find that plant cells are growing in a much, much slower rate and maintenance of sterility is a big problem as far as animal cells as well as plant cell cultivations are concerned. Now, if we see the different products which has got commercial interest, we can find that the metabolites which are produced by the plant cells can be divided into two parts. One is called primary metabolites, another is the secondary metabolites. When we are talking about the primary metabolites, the production is of one type. When we are talking about the secondary metabolites, then only we are going for the different types of cell cultivation, molecular biological approaches and so on or uh, this macro propagation and different techniques we are just talking about for plant cell cultivations too. Now here when we are talking about this food products, it may be colors, flavors, it can be oil, it can be any sweetener, it can be any spices that can be produced through plant cell cultivation. When we are talking about the pharmaceuticals, we are talking about the alkaloids, we are talking about steroids, we, we, are, we, we are also talking about some foreign proteins and some other biochemicals which has got immense application as per as today's world is concerned. When we are talking about the agricultural sector, agrochemicals are playing a significant role which can also be produced through plant cell cultivation. And here I have given you some of the uh, names which are symbolic to this plant tissue culture products. There are n number of such products which can be produced, which are being produced and isolated and getting up and, and uh, is applied as far as today's modern world is concerned. Coming to the microbial cell cultivation. So, why I am talking about all this cultivate this system because until and unless we know the plus point and the negative point of each and every system, it will be very very difficult for us to choose the actual system for metabolite production and until and unless we are selecting the system, we cannot go for the large quantity production of the metabolite which is of our own interest. Now when we are talking about this metabolic uh, microorganisms uh, as the means for cell cultivation, then we can find that microorganisms have been used by humus, human since prehistoric times in the preparation of food, alcoholic beverages, milk product, textile and so on. Today the use of microorganism is even more widespread than before. They are not only used for the traditional microbial processes but also for new processes such as production of pharmaceuticals, industrial chemicals, enzymes, agricultural chemicals, waste water treatment, mineral leaching and recombinant DNA technology. So, for any such any products which we have already learned in today's class can be possible through microbial intervention and that is the reason why microbes or microbial system is so popular. Now if we see 
the advantages of this microbial cells over the plant cell cultivation, then we can find that this plant cells are 10 to 100 times larger than bacterial or any fungal cell. That means obviously size is more, it is eukaryotic, bacterial or fungal system. It is mostly this bacteria is prokaryotic in nature and if we see the organizational development though fungus is coming under eukaryotes, but their development is, is not that developed compared to the plant cells. Now the metabolism of plant cells is slower than the microbial cells as I have already mentioned you earlier. In the order of magnitude, which requires the maintenance of sterility for a longer period of time that I have already mentioned you, cell culture tend to grow in clumps which cause sedimentation, poor mixing, plugging of inlet and outlet line, cell wall, that wall growth and so on. So, it takes time and maintenance of sterility is also very, very important as far as my, this plant cells are concerned and there should not be any microbial contamination or any other contamination during this cell cultivation process. Plant cells are more sensitive to shear than the microbial cell though cell walls are there in case of plant. Metabolic production in plant cells is subject to more complex regularity, uh, regularity mechanisms than metabolic, metabolic production of microbial cells. Plant cells are more genetically unstable than the microbial cell and that is the reason why every time the, the scientists they are taking the microbial cell as one of the means to express either animal sources gene or plant resource, the gene from plant, plant resource and expression media which is selected is the microbial system. Now, when we are going for the cultivation of these microbes. So, that is the reason that the reason I have justified that why microbes are generally considered for gene expression. Now, cloning is successfully done, but expression is not there. That system cannot be considered for further metabolite production. So, if we can successfully clone and express that particular metabolite in the microbial system, then only we can go for, we can consider that particular system for that metabolic production, production or metabolite production. For this, if we are selecting any microbes, then we are generally going for the fermentation system. Now, in this fermentation system, we are, if we see the enter fermentation system, then we can divide the fermentation process into two major categories. One is the submerged fermentation, another is the solid state fermentation. Nowadays, different types of fermentations are coming to picture. Some of these fermentations are called modified solid state fermentation. That means, whatever is this type of fermentation, some modification has been done and it is coming under this modified solid state fermentation. Now, what is submerged fermentation and what is solid state fermentation. Now, suppose we have taken a particular gene from a mammal 
and from the from that gene or any plant whatever may be the sources and we have taken that gene and we have cloned it in a bacterial in a plasmid DNA and we express that thing in any bacterial system say for example E. coli is one of the example. So, suppose we have taken that particular gene and we have expressed it for any metabolite production. Now, suppose if it is from the animal origin, so suppose BFGF that basic fibroblast growth factor. So, suppose we this is the mammalian that animal this cell cultivation and it is a growth factor and we can we have taken this gene from the parent tissue and we have expressed that thing in E. coli and we have seen that this particular product is successfully getting expressed in the bacterial system. Now, when we are going for the large scale production of this particular metabolite, we are selecting the fermentation system. Now, when we are going for this fermentation system, we are just taking this, this particular, we know that these are the different types of fermentation. One is the submerged, another is the solid state fermentation. So, this E. coli can be grown in different system. What is submerged and what is solid state fermentation? Now, we have to have some idea about this what is submerged fermentation and what is solid state fermentation. Then only we can go for any modification that is modified solid state and so on. Now, what is solid state and submerged fermentation? In submerged fermentation, the substrate is solubilized or suspended as fine particles in the large volume of liquid. That means, if we are considering that conical flask as one of the media and here if we are taking some of this media liquid component of the media and if we are just inoculating our this E. coli to grow in this, then we are just calling it when excess liquid is there, the media is liquid that is called submerged fermentation. That means, everything is inside the surrounding liquid. When there is no free flow liquid within the system fermentation area medium that then we are calling it as solid state fermentation. In solid state fermentation, the major difference is that here the media component or the constituents which are there is in a soluble form. Here we are taking insoluble biomasses which are considered to be the, the, the substrate for the growth of the organism and there is no free flow liquids are there. So, if we are considering that the tray as the bioreactor, then here we are compiling the insoluble substrate and then we are inoculating the microorganism to this and then we are just growing the microorganism and there is no free flow liquid. So, obviously, the aeration and whatever is there through the surface diffusion and here as this is the liquid medium, we can take any type of vessel, any type of agitator or any type of oxygen sparging system and with every control we can go for the production of our metabolite through the submerged fermentation. So, here we have the different types of defined control system and here the oxygen transfer is mainly taking place through the diffusion process. Now, here some other problems which are associated with the solid state fermentation is that when we are uh, inoculating the microorganism 
to this insoluble substrate, the most of the reactions are exothermic in nature. Now, when these exothermic reactions are going on within the system, then what we are find that lot of heat is generated within this system. When heat is generated, then temperature rise within the bed is taking place. Sometimes it has been seen that from the top layer to the bottom layer, a gradient of temperature which may exceed 20 degree. Now, here when such rise of temperature is there, the biochemicals which are being secreted, which are being produced by these living cells, microorganisms are getting denatured because it has been seen that most of the biochemicals are heat sensitive and that is the reason sometimes we have to have some water circulation or some forced aeration to remove the heat which is being generated within this particular system. Now, these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of this submerged fermentation and solid state fermentation. Now, here if we see the advantages of solid state fermentation over submerged fermentation, then we can find that there are huge advantages of solid state fermentation though it is suffering from some problems, but if we compare the solid state fermentation and the submerged fermentation, then we can say that it, it is the low water demand because no excess free flow liquid is there in this particular fermentation system and obviously less water, uh, waste water is produced. High concentration of the end products are there because here whenever the metabolites they are secreting the products in this particular media, it is remaining along with these insolubles. But here as this is the liquid, this uh, liquid, this whatever is the metabolites, these metabolites are getting diluted and diluted within the entire volume of this liquid and that is the reason why we are this dilution problem is so high in case of the submerged fermentation system. Now, here if we see that catabolite regression significantly lower or almost missing in case of this solid state fermentation, utilization of solid substrate is also there. We can use biomass as one of the uh, raw material for any metabolite production. That means, this metabolite production can be the sources is of cheaper, lower sterility demand, solid supports for the microorganisms are there. Simulation of the natural environment is also there. Fermentation of water insoluble solid substrates are generally taken as the raw material. Mixed culture of microorganisms can also be attempted for better productivity of the product. Microorgan in the processing uh, advantages, if we see, then we can find that high volume productivity, that means smaller fermenter volume is giving the high productivity, low energy demand for heating, easy aeration, utilization of otherwise unstable carbon sources are also there which are cheap and abundant carbon sources are being utilized in this process. No antifoam chemicals are to be added because no liquid is there, foaming problem is not there which is very, very means uh, probable problem in case of the submerged fermentation. If we see the characteristics of solid state fermentation and submerged fermentation, then further we can divide the two processes like 
this it is a static process this one is the static pause process we can go for agitation through if we find that the system is aerobic in nature water uses in this particular uh, solid state fermentation is limited and in case of submerged fermentation the water use is unlimited if we see the volume of fermentation mass this it is in case of solid state fermentation it is smaller in case of submerged fermentation a huge quantity of liquid handling is there oxygen supply i have already told you that through diffusion and here in case of submerged fermentation it is through aeration liquid waste production is almost negligible in case of solid state fermentation and in case of submerged fermentation it is significant physical energy requirement is low in case of solid state fermentation and in case of submerged fermentation it is very high human energy requirement is in case of solid state fermentation is high whereas in case of submerged fermentation it is low capital investment is low in case of solid state fermentation whereas submerged fermentation it is high now if we see here as this media is liquid we can easily go for automation and with all mechanical means we can use with the machines but here as i have told you that this process is being carried out through this solid state fermentation and here the tray type of fermenter and this here this system mechanic there's a mechanization of this particular system is very very difficult and that is the reason here human intervention is very very needed that is the reason why manpower requirement in case of solid state fermentation is so high compared to the submerged fermentation this is one of the disadvantage uh, disadvantages what i have till now discussed but lot of advantages are there on this solid state fermentation over the submerged fermentation now if we see the fermentation overall fermentation system irrespect of solid state or submerged we can find that there are very many factors which are playing a significant role as far as this particular fermentation is concerned now selection of suitable substrate selection of efficient microorganism that means selection of microorganism relative humidity of the fermentation system moisture content amount and type of inoculums which are used for this particular system temperature of the system production uh, that period of production or the incubation time for the product synthesis these are some of the very very important parameters which are playing a significant role as far as the fermentation is concerned now if we see the suitable microorganism for solid state fermentation then we can find that in most of the cases if we see the architecture of the bacterial cell these are unicellular in nature but if we see the fungal cell they are thread like hyaline structure and these hair like structure they are getting cracked or it forms a lump when it is coming in contact with this liquid media sometimes when the, and this this heli, this hair like structure of these fungus are so delicate once with very minute uh, handling problem their 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 thread or the hyphae may get cracked once this hyphae is getting cracked all the intracellular materials are coming out of the cell and as we have already discussed that lysozo li, lysozyme is there within the cell and when lysozyme is there lysozyme is one of the product which is coming out of the cell to this surrounding medium 
and when this surrounding medium this lysozyme is coming it start damaging the intact cell because that is the suicidal enzyme and it damage the total cell and that is the reason why while uh, culturing the filamentous fungus generally solid state fermentation is mostly preferred. Now, here this, uh, uh, this fungi they serve a suitable microorganism for solid state fermentation because of the following reason. Fungi grow well in solid state fermentation by producing hydrolytic enzyme and breaking their own organic materials into inorganic material minerals mineral compounds for the survival in nature. Fungi are able to withstand the limited water availability in the solid substrate and, and the conditions of solid state fermentation remain similar to those of the natural habitat. Fungal spore can easily develop and proliferate on the surface of the solid matrix in solid state fermentation. Now, these are some of this uh, uh, this advantages or the uh, the the characteristics of some of these microorganisms which are forcing us to select such type of fermentation system and when we are handling the filamentous fungi mostly solid state fermentation system is selected. Now, this particular uh, this uh, the, this particular uh, solid state fermentation is otherwise called as Koji fermentation. Now, when we are talking about the solid state bioreactor, now here for large scale production of such type of things in in the small tray we can start in small beakers or the petri plate also we can consider those things as the reactor that tray type of reactor and we can start our work and when we are going for the large quantity then we are going for the tray type of reactor. Now in the laboratory we are just starting it in a laboratory scale with a small tray and when we are going for the pilot and the industrial scale, then I told you that number of trays are getting increased for the increased amount bulk production of the metabolites. Now, when in case of solid state fermentation we are considering, it is without forced aeration is there. It correspond to the tray fermenter as typified by the famous Koji processes. A tray bioreactor bio consists of a chamber in which the air is there with controlled temperature and relative humidity is circulated around the number of trays made up of wood, metal or plastic. So, as I have told you that as the meta during metabolite production lot of heat, uh, heat is being generated to reduce the temperature that water circulation is preferred. Each tray contain a thin layer of substrate typically between 5 to 15 centimeter deep and usually has an open top and perforated bottom. The main and disadvantages of this configuration is that this technology requires the numerous trays large area and it is labor intensive and that room which is there that in that particular room the control temperature and humidity both has to be maintained. Now, when we are talking about the pack bait unmixed solid state fermentation bioreactor, it involves the static bed on top of the perforated plate through which the conditions air is blown. The main drawback of this configuration is that it is difficult in obtaining the pro product, uh, product that means 
leaching out the product is difficult. Non-uniform growth of the microorganism is also there. Poor heat removal and scaling up problem are associated with this. Now, when we are going for the continuously rotating drum and intermittent mixing bed bioreactor with forced aerations, we can overcome some of the problems associated with this type of static process. Now, in this rotating drum, drum is getting rotated in a very slow speed and fermentation within that insoluble matrix are going on and it is getting that rotation and it is getting the aeration and surface area also it is getting throughout the drum and that with a very low speed the substrates are moving and uh, this uh, your uh, uh, in, a, in a horizontal uh, drum uh, where which may not have backfill and which is rotated continuously for such type of product formation. For a discontinuously rotating drum, the design is identical to that of a continuously rotating drum. Now, here when we are going for the mixed bed bioreactor with forced aeration, now here we are just giving the aeration, forced aeration to drag the heat out of this particular bed. And when we are going for this classification of this process, we can go for the batch process, continuous process, fed batch process and so on. Now, in case of this solid state fermentation, fed batch process, continuous process is very, very difficult to maintain for which we can switch over to the submerged fermentation. Now, when we are going for this submerged fermentation, the submerged fermentation is totally different from that of the solid state fermentation. Now, here in case of continuous fermentation, one group of tray is entering and one group of tray is going out. Continuously, there is a flow and with a certain incubation time that trays are going out continuously and that is the continuous fermentation process, but independent trays are being handled if irrespective of whether it is a continuous or it is a batch process. In case of submerged fermentation, here the control system is totally different from that of this solid state fermentation. So, in our next class, we will be discussing on the solid state there is a submerged fermentation and how this submerged fermentation is being taken care of by different types of reactor for the production of different biochemicals of our own interest we will learn that. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm.